I don't know how this can happen, but... Yeah, we will um, insert also the slides in the next uh, webinar communication so that if they are interested, they can download the slides and they can rewatch the video. Okay, maybe shall we start? Yes, at six, why not? Okay, so perfectly on time. Yes, hello, good evening to everybody. Uh, this is Maura Di Mauro. I'm the pleasure, have the pleasure to introduce this evening Cristina Volpi, uh, the actual president of CITAR Italia, and um, her first, for what I know, webinar. So yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy to, to be able to introduce her on the webinars board and, uh, and platform. Uh, and I'm also very glad to introduce the second CITAR Europa webinar. Um, many others will follow during the year, and we are at our second uh, webinar events. Thanks to be here, thanks to attending this webinar. And um, as you know, you are in an unmute um, uh, modality. Uh, in order to interact uh, with Christina and eventually also with me, you will use mainly the chat. Christina uh, will try to involve you uh, with some questions, and so please use the chat screen in order to answer. I will collect the answer and so that we can have some interaction. Of course, later on, you can keep the contacts directly with Christina by email, LinkedIn, any kind of, uh, um, of tools she uses in order to be available for your further question or a deeper understanding about what she's, she's, she's going to share with us. And as you know, this webinar will be recorded. Actually, we are already in recording modality and you will be uh, on YouTube soon as well. So, no more uh, words from my side. I leave the words to Cristina Volpi. And thank you, Cristina. Um, start your uh, webinar and uh, good luck and enjoy the, the learning <laughs> that we get from this webinar. Thank you, Mara. So, good evening to everybody and thank you for being here, even if I can see you. Uh, we are going to speak about the use of metaphors for intercultural training and especially the use of metaphors coming out from us art masterpieces. Um, step by step, I'll try to show you how I'm using some metaphors and why I'm using them coming from uh, art uh, rather than any other kind of images or sentences and so on. I'll be showing you some pictures, um, some architectures, and also some metaphors coming out from literature. And step by step, I'll be asking you also which kind of feelings or which kind of ideas they are giving you, because this is the kind of exercise that we can do together, and which is an example of the kind of exercise then we, that we can do as uh, intercultural trainers or intercultural coach. So let's start. Sorry, the doesn't work. Wow, why? Oh, here. Yeah. We start with Shakespeare. Since we are speaking English, I thought that, that was the best beginning. So this is Romeo and Juliet, uh, translated in Italian, but it uh, begins, and I hope that my pronunciation is not too bad. It's uh, Luke Love, what time you streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night scandals are burnt out, and Jocund Day stands deep too on the misty mountain tops. Uh, so that's Romeo and Juliet. And this kind of metaphor, which is one of the most famous of Shakespeare, immediately brings us in which kind of atmosphere? Can you start helping me in uh, using your chat and sending me some messages about which kind of mood gives you this sentence? 
Where are we? Are we happy? Are we nervous? Uh, uh, are we young? Are we old? Uh, are we looking to the future, uh, wandering back to the past? Uh, what are we doing with this kind of sentence? Feel mean brown um, shared with us a romantic atmosphere. According to her, this sentence is, this sentence is uh, spreading a romantic view or atmosphere. So Michael say expectant. In, what's, in, in which meaning expectant, Michael? Can you explain a little bit better? Taking the time to write what expectant. Well, it seems to be the break of day. Okay, something will happen. Okay. Yeah, it, it, that's a good, uh, so a good item, no? That something may happen. And that's a romantic atmosphere. So that's something nice. And so this, we can use this, but you see, has a, a short sentence. No? is giving us some insights, no? some insights that we may want to share with somebody else, no? or which is giving us some emotions. Yeah, Veronica uh, de la Fonte um, is sharing that is like uh, a pleasant goodbye. A pleasant goodbye. So why, what's the metaphor? Just Simon, just, just, uh, Simon, I think he shared yeah. his poem. I don't know what we see at night without the day's busyness takes us by surprise. Standing on the shore, we are drowned by distant lights, waterboard laughter. When our drudge is done, imagination sets sail from shadows harbors yes i think was one of his poems i don't know of if course it times ago or uh, him, uh, right now it's an addition to our examples of metaphors yeah so let's start uh, with the definition of what a metaphor is uh, I have used this one of uh, Percival Vivian dictionary of literary terms uh, where uh, he says that uh, a metaphor is a similitude briefly expressed without any indication of comparison. Which means that if I say that a person looks like an angel, this isn't a metaphor, it's a similitude. But if I say, oh, an angel is arriving, and the truth is that a person is coming inside into the room, that's a metaphor. Well, the metaphor is shorter. No, and doesn't give itself the second term. No? So it's only giving us an insight. And some metaphors are called poetical, where some words belonging to some contents are used in a different context. Like uh, in the sentence, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, where slings and arrows are specialized words uh, meaning in the context of ballistics and are here transferred in the context of fortune. So that's why we can say that this, also this one, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, this sentence is giving us a metaphor because it's using some words in a, in a meaning that isn't their original one. So that's about metaphor. Another step into Shakespeare, and here we have the Midsummer Night Dream. My gentle pack, come hither. Thou rememberst since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath. So now, where we are again? Can you explain us? Can you give some questions to everybody? Questions? To participants to share the uh, thoughts um, about what the metaphor inspired to them. Okay, no answer at the moment. 
Okay, no answer at the yes, moment. We have, no, 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 we have the first answer. Michael is sharing that is a, um, it came in, in his mind dreamy. Hmm? Anybody else? Well, it's dreamy. It's uh, magical as you're adding. It's uh, perhaps it's sunny. It's uh, it's summer. It's uh, holiday. Perhaps uh, it's freedom or something like this. And that's why, because the metaphor is helping you to go somewhere else. Because the word metaphor, perhaps everybody knows, but it comes from Greek metaphorein. And just a second. Transportation. The answer <laughs> are are started to come now. So dreamy, magical. Sorry. Uh, I'm not, there, there is Edna that is saying is, I'm not familiar with some of the words. So it's a little bit difficult to answer the question. Okay. Okay. Uh, the word, the, there is the, the translation, but it's in Italian, unfortunately. Ed, Ed. <laughs> you can think about when you will receive the slide, maybe you can rethink about the sentence. And anyway, until now, uh, uh, up to this point, we received mainly from Michael, uh, dreamy, uh, dreamy and magical as uh, uh, awesome or a um, uh, feeling that he had listening this uh, uh, Shakespeare sentence. Okay, and he's totally agreed that it, the metaphor is transports you to a good place. Oh, not only a good place, but uh, another place. Okay, it could be also negative, a, a bad negative place. It could be a different metaphor. In this case, a good place. So, if I go on, so if metaphor is transportation, and really in ancient Greek, uh, it means uh, simply transportation, also relocation. Uh, why? Because it leads to another world, another atmosphere, another mindset, but also another way of feeling, behaving, negotiating, setting goals, uh, uh, seeing to the personal relationships, uh, and so on. So that's why we can use the metaphor uh, in the context of coaching and uh, intercultural coaching, because it's very helpful to get in quickly in another mindset, or to understand that the same situation for example, the, the, the side of a dolphin uh, the, on, uh, in, in Shakespeare's sentence can mean something in one culture and a different feeling in another culture. So that's why my feeling, my believing, is that a metaphor is a wonderful tool for a coach. And we can use it really, I think in every session of coaching, we can use one of two metaphors in order to help the person to get inside a different mood. Or in a situation in a group like we are now this afternoon of people coming from several cultures, we can use it as a stimulus to go inside different feelings, looking how different people are reacting to the same image. So that's why for the next uh, exercises, I have been choosing some pictures, which are perhaps more helpful because there isn't a difficulty of this ancient uh, uh, English of, uh, of Shakespeare that I have translated only in Italian. And of course the translation was not mine, but uh, uh, a better one. Now, if we want to go on with some pictures, where I will try to use these pictures in order to make you uh, to, 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 you, to, to, to have a sort of discussion <coughs> and to see how a situation can be seen in different meaning as dif belonging to different meanings and giving different, uh, uh, really different ideas, uh, different mindsets. So let's start. 
This is Leonardo da Vinci. And it's the angel saying to Mary that she is going to be pregnant and that uh, her son is going to be God. This is a, I suppose it's a famous painting, Italian Renaissance. And I think that uh, uh, besides its religious uh, meaning, it can also be used as a, to, to reflect, to, to think about two different roles in our life and in our companies. Because uh, one hypothesis is that there are two different roles in, your, in any kind of life. One is the role of uh, consultants, advisors, lawyers, uh, um, perhaps uh, the newspapers uh, and so on. People and roles who are giving, saying something, are telling news, uh, are explaining something, are sending a message, are explaining something. And there is another half of the world who are uh, getting information, using uh, new opinions and are making the job and perhaps they are blue colors uh, uh, engineers uh, managers also anybody who is involved in really making the things happen so in this case my suggestion is that the angel is uh, if you want the consultant or which is also the host the, sorry the guest in a situation and that the image of Mary is here the image of the manager the person who is doing the job or in a house the person who's in charge with food and making that everything is in order or in a, or the host in the relationship with her guest so if we have to choose each of us if for instance, in our private life or in our job, it's up to you to choose. Which role is mainly ours? The role of the guest, of the angel, of the consultant, of the newcomer, or the role of the manager, the housekeeper, the, the worker, the host? Please, I'm waiting for your answers. Now it's a more difficult question, as you have seen. It's uh, starting really to work with images. Who am I? I'm the person who's making the job, in this case, Mary, who is uh, perhaps uh, uh, working every day, who is uh, uh, involved in the results of, uh, which, is, which is committed with reaching the goals, uh, which is committed with uh, really a result? Or am I the angel, the consultant, uh, the teacher, somebody who is saying how things should be, but is not really involved uh, in uh, what's happening after? Who am I? Well, Veronica is saying that she is both roles. Uh, Alexandra, She's mostly the angel. George, uh, consultant delivering surprising news. So it's it somehow it's both, but mainly the consultant. Um, uh, Joanna, one can be both depending on the context, on the situation. Uh, Edna, as a trainer, I could see myself to be an angel. And uh, Wilhelmin, I don't know if it's right the pronunciation of her name, mm. the consultant and the angel at the same time, Sylvia, both, depending on the situation. I miss it at the beginning because I couldn't log in, so I'm not, well, uh, I just arrived. Uh, but as a coach and trainer, she felt herself just as, uh, mostly as the angel. Okay, thank you. So, how you have seen this image, but not only the image, the use of the image that your coach is doing, no, can help you to see something of you. 
But it can also be used in some other way, which is, uh, if I can say, I don't know, let's say George Simons, or people who have been answering, I'm mainly an angel, or mostly I'm an angel and a consultant. If you had to be in your role, but as a manager, as Mary, and look to the image, the image who is uh, uh, getting inside the news, uh, getting inside uh, the, the message, uh, and who from now on will be doing the work. If you have this image of the way your job should be done, would this give you some clues to do it differently? I can say the reverse to people who are feeling themselves more as managers. Would it be different if being managers, you see your role on the other side, being an angel, somebody who has a message, somebody who's more involved with the future, with what's new? Well, Philip said before, as a consultant and coach, he see himself, and as uh, and a teacher, he see himself more as an angel. Well, what I'm suggesting at that is that uh, and i'm trying to show you the way images can be used uh, is that one possible use is uh, to add to the first reflection who am i a second which is what could i be if i see myself also in the opposite role the second exercise that we can use with this image in an intercultural context is in your culture, which ones are the role which culturally are linked to being Mary, the manager, the worker, and which ones are linked to be the angel, the consultant, the guest? And when you say roles, you can also think to feminine and masculine roles, or to age, so not only gender, but also age. Uh, and here we are getting closer to the intercultural points, uh, no? because not in all cultures, uh, it's the people are perceived as belonging to the same set, or the cultural perceived value of being managers, workers, is different than the culturally perceived value of being the consultant, the newcomer, the person who gives you the, 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 the news, uh, the ideas, the future. Are we more involved with the future or with the past or with the present, if not the past? So that's, in my feeling, the, the, the clues that this image can give us. Mm. We, well, have, we have uh, thoughts from George Simon that uh, said change management, OMG, I'm going to be pregnant. Looks like we will have to manage change. Help, Help is coming. <laughs> Joanna is answering. So just to show you the use of the images and we can, I'm sure you some more, no, in order that you see. So that's the creation, Michael, Michelangelo, Michelangelo. And we can ask ourselves, uh, in our culture, no, which is the role of uh, creation? Who's giving what uh, to whom? What is the beginning, no? And what's the ending? Who's starting and giving? 
am I more receiving and doing? I go on. And I'm changing also with the period. That's Rene Magritte. Rene Magritte and the title of this picture is uh, uh, The Coming Back. Mm. Just a second. Yeah, perhaps. Christina, uh, there is a, um, a, um, a, a share of thoughts by Joanna that yeah. is saying that I just received the message in a controversial case of cultural adaptation. Italian government officials made the decision to cover ancient nude status in Rome, Capit Capitoline Museum, earlier this week in preparation for a news conference with visiting Iranian president. Yes, uh, we know and everybody was laughing about this, of course, uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, uh, definitely an attitude of showing uh, uh, hosting, <laughs> 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 considering what the, uh, the foreigners uh, could appreciate or not. Well, in this painting by René Magritte, can I ask you all, uh, what do you see? What's important in this image for you? Let's try again to use the chat. Yeah. Care, caring, care. It feels very full of open promise to me, Penny. Well, escape, light. I don't know why. Wow. Very contradictory. Contradictual escape and line and light are uh, uh, the opposite. <laughs> Protection, hope, care for the basket and see possibility for free flying. Freedom with responsibility. The most important thing for me is the connection when they try to be connected through their finger. Dark and light parts of reality. So the very different meanings. Yeah. So now we are going to, as you see, different feelings about coming from the same picture. Of course, we are not here talking about the value of the masterpiece uh, as coming from because it's an art masterpiece but you are trying to use it as an image so we are not criticizing it or understanding why it's beautiful or if it is not but using it as an image as you see different people are seeing different things these different things can also be linked to their cultural uh, context and uh, you can add, uh, as a teacher, as a coach, you can also add uh, some questions. Uh, what is your nest? Uh, which are your eggs? Uh, uh, what's the landscape uh, below the, the flying bird? What are your... Uh, which, which one is your sky? What does sky mean for you? which means that you are not using it as a test. The point is not to really to get the answers from the people, but that they, uh, in a maiotical way, that the answers come out from themselves, that the person becomes conscious of what is important for them and what are values from them, for for them and how to compare these values with the values of another culture so that's why i think that these paintings this kind of images may be useful in intercultural coaching as in any kind of coaching because it helps you to say and 
to make coming out, what's important, which are the first things that you see, and how you can compare it with other ways of feeling and seeing. So let's go on. No, wait, wait, here. This is an interesting painting. Why? Because, well, it's uh, the, the famous uh, uh, the lesson of anatomy of Dr. Tult of Rembrandt. And it shows a way of teaching that is quite uh, interesting because the teacher, the professor that you see with, uh, with a sort of knife in his hands, uh, no, is at the same level of his students. And it's one of the first uh, paintings showing a group uh, in all uh, uh, European paintings. When I say showing a group, I mean something different from uh, the, um, the group of people uh, praying uh, the, the, the Virgin or God or going to the war, but where everybody has a role, a, fa a, a face, an attitude. So, looking for to this uh, picture, we can ask ourselves, since we are, most of us, uh, we are teachers. The way we are teaching is the one of Dr. Tulp, or uh, which is, who is showing through this corpse uh, what should be done to his students, and where his students are at his same level with no distinction of importance. No? They are all around the same body. And he's really showing, and uh, uh, he's always also showing himself the way he's working. No? So it's a very transparent situation and a very same level situation. If I have to compare it with an Italian university, I would say that our professors, our university professors, are rarely on the same level of students, but not only because they are on one side and students are on the other side, but also because their behavior uh, shows the different among who is speaking and the other people who are uh, trying to understand. So now again, in your culture, which is the way of teaching which is most more common? It's this one or it's a different one? Well, we'll see if we have any answer. Well, I don't know if we are all from Europe or uh, all with a Western background. We might have the same answer to this question or we might have different um, views. Uh, Michael is saying we have the first answer. Uh, I'm from UK, so like this, but I live in France. And it's not at all like this. So, well, I understand. <laughs> um, um, English and French culture, uh, there is, it seems, according to Michael, a, a, a big difference in, uh, in terms of uh, teaching, learning styles, and approach. Yeah. In the Netherlands, where I live, the way is similar to what Rembrandt painted. In Brazil, teachers are in a posture more hierarchical. Uh, Elena, I teach in Finland and Helsinki, very egalitarian approach. Yeah, if not uh, other answer at the moment. So we can also stop in order to use the more images we can. What I'm showing you is that this image can be used also for one of the points of uh, Hofstede's uh, items, uh, which is the, the importance of hierarchical distance and how it reflects the 
the differences in hierarchy which can be used in teaching but of course also in groups in working in families in the role of elder people in the family and so on or in the role of uh, rich people compared to rest, less rich people and so on so you can use this painting and really i suggest this painting I like a uh, an entry point uh, to open a discussion about uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, relationships that uh, you have in your culture or in other cultures or that you have experienced or that you would like to have or the kind of culture you are used to but you have you have perceived is not the kind of culture which is accepted in the place where you are or where you are going to live or you are going to work all kind of discussions that lead us to discover the cultural differences but it's easier simply if you start with an image and with a good image and really this one in my opinion is a good one going on this is a it isn't a picture it's a sculpture but it's nearly oh sorry it's a very flat sculpture it's uh, from a modern artist uh, david gerstein but he's a frenchman he's working in paris and this is a big mouse uh, uh, saying i love you i don't know if you can see it that the mouse uh, through some different is saying i love you so perhaps uh, we can use this mouse uh, to ask ourselves uh, in my professional culture or in my fam family culture what can be said and what can cannot be said uh, no? what has to be declared uh, and what should be hidden avoided not said uh, which one are the, the kind of area of i can say also secrets uh, or the kind of things uh, that we are about which we are very open there are questions there are subjects that in the different cultures are open or closed to make an example uh, well, in Italy, you don't ask anybody how much money he's earning. Hmm? In other countries, that's the first question you can ask. So this can be used as a starting point to compare really what can be said and what is not. Some suggestion from you? What you ask about family or whether you are married I mean if you can or not or can't ask uh, if you're married or not if it's uh, a taboo questions or a common question to do in a business context uh, what in Italy it would be very common to talk about your family family composition and family life but in, in other not at all definitely so as you see two very simple questions no like this one can you which is the first question you can ask to a person about their private life or can you ask any question about private life here really differences are burning out uh, are coming out very clearly you know? and you uh, can ask them in a group uh, in, in a multicultural group in order to show how some things that are perceived are natural aren't natural at all or you can use it in individual coaching you no know? again for the same thing uh, because the first reaction of the person is uh, of anybody is uh, the way they are thinking, the way they are feeling, but the second step is uh, to ask yourself: Is this really the only possibility, or are there uh, many others? And again, with 
a painting that's easier so why art metaphors and here i'm also answering to a question which was if i am sometimes using photographs okay. uh, second we have a, a comment from penny uh that was commenting the mouth uh, features yes she she said that is, is an interesting image and for instance in norway uh, where she lived she, had, she lived for a while everyone's tax documents are online and data protection is a foreign concept very unlike germany where i live thank you for this because it's very interesting and uh, uh, this makes really that about uh, also conversation subject and the concept of what's privacy what is really mine what belongs only only to me or to my family and what i can share the kind of information i'm sharing that's really an important point in uh, in intercultural communication mm -hmm. so i go back to uh, so why art metaphors because of course uh, any metaphor can be used. I'm suggesting art images. Why? Because they are mostly well known. Here we can open a parenthesis. Mostly they are rich and powerful. They are beautiful. And they are full of details which can be used because, well, in our mouths, the last one you can use. No, sorry. You can use the single colors, uh, the written I love you. Uh, here you can uh, use the details of uh, the way people are looking, the way they are dressed, uh, the way they are looking to the corpse or to the professor or to the painter. And here you can speak about uh, uh, the clouds, uh, the light, the X, uh, as every one of you has been doing. No, so that's because an art image that it has many details uh, and its richness in is helping us uh, to say a lot of things. So that's why I'm using art uh, images as metaphors. And personally, I'm using mainly. Uh, paintings and perhaps sculptures, sculptures because I was graduated in architecture so that's the kind of uh, area where I know more images uh, and uh, this this that's why I'm I like to use them because I know them simply because of course art doesn't mean only literature and paintings it also square buildings music movies uh, theater photo, uh, picture photographs any kind and another thing that I'd like to add is that a metaphor isn't only in itself a useful tool it's the two things the use of the metaphor and the coach who's using it because it's you using an image who are suggesting a reflection who are adding a meaning a, a clue to the image you are giving to your coachee or to, to your client and you are suggesting a, a way of thinking a way of meaning something to get some <laughs> insights so it isn't simply in the image the power it's in the sum of a coach who's using using an image as a metaphor that we have this magic situation that ideas feelings and so on are coming out mm -hmm. so to add the some other images. This is no more a painting. It was Korea Pavilion in Milan Expo. That was a sort of sculpture. It was very more or less three meters tall. And it's a quantity of empty cans and it was used as a symbol of waste that our culture is wasting a lot of things and this was in contradiction with the meaning of Expo whose, uh, uh, whose idea was to work about the concept of uh, sustainability. But we can use this image, uh, the idea of waste, uh, no? to ask uh, ourselves uh, 
what did I waste, me personally, and what did I use uh, correctly? No? Which kind of skills, opinions, opportunities, uh, um, relationship, and so on, uh, did I use uh, in, a non, in a not correct way? And what did I use useful, usefully? And this is on a personal basis. But you can also ask yourself, in this culture, what's waste? What is wasted? What is felt as waste? And what is fel felt as uh, richness, value, something valuable? Because, of course, again, there's a difference. And not only a difference between rich countries and poor countries, but really in, uh, what is important uh, and what can be uh, thrown away. No? What uh, is uh, with us uh, and is remaining with us uh, and what's uh, used uh, and let in the garbage. Uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, in countries like the one where I live in Italy, that where we are linked to the past, uh, Ancient things aren't garbage, aren't waste. Uh, ancient things are more culture or something uh, which has a value. In other countries, uh, ancient things are simply old things, uh, no more useful, uh, which can be thrown away, wasted, uh, uh, abandoned, uh, let, uh, let go. Mm. Well, interesting. I haven't seen the Korea Pavilion, Christina, at Expo. <laughs> I saw many other pavilions this week. <laughs> I'm sure about it, so happy to, to see the, the installation. We have a couple of comments, and particularly Maike from the Netherlands. Um, I don't know if Maike is a female or a male name, but I uh, hope I won't offend him or her. Uh, use, anyway, she or he shared, using metaphors, visual or expressions also needs carefulness. I once heard this story. A Turkish man went to a doctor in the Netherlands. The doctors asked the patient for his problems and said at the end of the visit, I'd like to go into the sea with you, which literally means I like to work with you. The Dutch often use the sea and the water in their metaphors. The Turkish man never went back to the doctor because he explained it. I cannot swim, so I do not like to go in the sea with the doctor. So, well, of course, be careful, particularly in intercultural context, because you might wrong the metaphor you are using as irony as well, humor and uh, and. Our, That's perfect, and thank you. Because, of course, there is another uh, comment from Jusara. I see the installation as very much connected with sustainability, raising awareness for how people deal with waste and how much societies are not paying attention for packages they might not need. Um. Also before, when I say that in the last slide, uh, mass, it, um, art masterpieces are often well known, well, not really always well known, and you have to choose the metaphor. And I remember the case of a colleague who used once uh, a, an interesting painting of um, Paolo, the, the picture, which was a, a, a small picture of uh, a reproduction, from Paolo Veronese, who is an Italian painter of the 16th century. And the subject, uh, well, in Italian it is Le Nozze di Cana, which is uh, the marriage, the, the, um, which was where Jesus Christ was, uh, and he made the miracle of changing the water in wine. So uh, that uh, this uh, marriage was in 
Cana, pronunciated in Italian. So we call it Le Nozze di Cana. And he used this image and he, he showed his, uh, and he was showing it to his Kochi. And while he was showing it, but not yet uh, showing and saying, uh, well, I'm going to um, comment with you this uh, Nozze di Cana. And the Kochi asked, who's Cana, a football player? I don't know him. Mm -hmm. And of course, this wasn't the best beginning, uh, no? because if you don't know the subject and you have no idea about the painting, uh, then the use of the image had, should be, or at least uh, sh should be used in a different way. While in this case, the coach was starting from the idea that they could discuss about changing water into wine. and. Uh, and the use of resources. This was his idea, but uh, he chose the wrong subject. With uh, with he was a young man, uh, absolutely not a cultivated person, and of course not at all any kind of culture about uh, religion or uh, well any kind of thing. So this. Uh, this uh, this story didn't say anything to you, so it was really useless to use it. And it, in this case, it isn't only useless, it's wrong, because uh, uh, you are wasting the atmosphere that you are creating with your pochi. Then again, you have to be careful in choosing uh, your images. So going on. That's Fondation Louis Vuitton in Paris. This is a place because another use of metaphors that we can make is not only to show them to a person, where we can show them on the on a computer or uh, as a, a, with a, with a photograph and so on. What I, what I'm doing sometimes is to go with my Kochi in a specific place that I can use as a metaphor. Here I have chosen a couple of places. One of them is uh, this Fondation Louis Vuitton in Paris, which is an incredible place. And where you can ask people how they feel, for instance, with innovation. With, uh, uh, with art, with use of art in a culture, and what is innovation for him, what is innovation in other cultures, how important is innovation for him. And if you ask it in this way, of course, everybody would answer, oh, innovation is very interesting, very important but you can ask him how much of his time is used to learn something new, or how much of his time is used to teach something to his children or his uh, employees. Or this subject can be used as uh, uh, an example of uh, modern architecture, of, it's a sort of, it's a strange building, remembering a little bit uh, the say, a boat uh, with sails. And it's uh, used by Fondation Louis Vuitton also as a stage for, for showing the, the, the products, of course. And inside uh, there are uh, exhibitions uh, that are for, for everybody. You go there and you can uh, see the, the exhibitions. Okay. Well. Uh, you so, selected several pictures for uh, different purposes and to show us how could we use these pictures for uh, different coaching topics. Uh, can we, um, because we are, it's seven o'clock, maybe we, you can share with us um, a few other examples and then... Only one more, Piazza di Spagna, a square. So everybody no, sorry, I leave the onion. That's the last image, but I could have been using any kind of square. I think that bringing a person in a square is a powerful experience, but really any kind of square, because a square is an open space surrounded but by something. This something is mostly 
uh, important buildings or banks or churches. And so you can uh, use uh, this, this situation to ask people what is important in his life, in his company, in his uh, workshop, in his group, which means what is uh, the what's in, what you see mainly, no, and uh, what is the space uh, of being together? Because the square in the town uh, is the place where you meet, uh, where people, where there is there, there are more people, where there is it's well, it's more crowded and this again you can use it personally with as a personal insight what is in my leadership style what's the what's the what is the church in my leadership style what is the important building or also what how should i use in a different way the important points of my leadership style or which kind of style should be should I use in a different culture so again being in a situation so using a square or a public building as a as a metaphor as a stimulus can help people to understand something more about what the way they're acting and to compare this with somebody else's behavior or opinions or acting. So simply this, that's the, the, the main message of this uh, <coughs> show that I have tried to share with us. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> and if you are interested in uh, uh, using these uh, images, please ask them and Maura will, uh, will send them to you. If you want to, to use more and you to have more clues, please ask me. Personally, I'm using them a lot. I think it's really powerful. Simply this, it's useful and powerful because it gives insight. And immediately, as it has been happening for you, from an image uh, you 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 have a concept uh, you have an idea and you can compare this idea with somebody else's idea and that's the the the, the core of intercultural competence okay and, uh, the first thanks are coming michael child transported is thanking you yes uh, new ideas thank you for that In any context, it's useful to use metaphors and art metaphors. Uh, very interesting and inspiring. Okay, so. You're very nice and thank you a lot. Yeah, they appreciate it. So thank yeah. you so much for, uh, all the to all the participants. Uh, you will receive the video recording and the slides. If you want to keep in touch with Christina, if you want to be part of her group sharing in ages and experiences on um, how to use arts metaphor in coaching you can write her you have on the last slide on the last chart her uh, email address christina.volpi at coachingzone.it if you want to share some uh, personal case as a coach in using arts metaphor i think you might have also some space on um, uh, Christina website coachingzone.it uh, you can write also in English it's uh, although it is a, um, it's a website with dot uh, it uh, it's well uh, spread all around the world and uh, some of uh, the intercultural coaches are already uh, present on uh, her website so keep in touch with her and uh, continues to follow uh, CITAL Europa webinars. We will have the next one in uh, March. We are already preparing it and we wait you for the other webinars. Enjoy the evening to everybody. Thank you for your par participation. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, Maura. Thank you, Christina. <laughs>